Art Rocks is made possible by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and by viewers like you. Hello, thank you for joining us for Art Rocks with me, James Fox Smith of Country Roads Magazine. Each year in the capital city, established artists gather to judge the works of some very talented Baton Rouge art students. The cream of the crop will be invited to exhibit their work at Baton Rouge Gallery and perhaps experience the pleasure of selling a piece too. This is the Real Life Experience Juried High School Exhibition. It's an annual tradition at Baton Rouge Gallery, something that the gallery has been doing since the early 1990s. And the idea really is that we give the students in East Baton Rouge Parish the opportunity to get a taste of what real life is for professional visual artists. We work with the teachers and the teachers actually select up to 15 pieces per teacher that are submitted then to the gallery. So there's a, a bit of a jurying process that happens in the schools themselves. And then those 15 pieces per teacher come to us and then ultimately to the jury panel of three professional artists. You might have a photographer, a painter, and a sculptor. The medias change each year as do the jurors. Hopefully each year creating a different experience. I do send 15 pieces. It's very complicated when I teach 75 kids a day and then I have to decide out of the 75 what is the selection. For me, ultimately, it is not just the piece, but what the student is trying to perceive and give to the world. Normally, we have a, a huge opening reception for this show each year, where we have students, teachers, family members here in person for the event, and that's when we, we get to announce the winners for each year. Because of the exhibition sponsors, Cordell and Ava Heyman, we're able to have prize monies for the top three pieces, which is a huge, huge thrill for us to be able to offer each year. Over $1,000 in cash and prizes are given out each year. I was sitting watching TV and mom told me to come watch the show. And he was showing the pictures and I thought, there's no way I won. And then he called my name. It was shock, like I was so excited and scared at the same time. I knew he was going to tell me to get on the camera. I answered the questions he asked. I think we all look for a composition of balance in our life. What I would have to say to all of these children is to find those bits and pieces and how you take those bits and pieces and create a beautiful balanced composition with a message. It's the most important thing that you can do with your life. And I feel often that is what I try to do with my students, is to understand the whole. But how do you take those bits and pieces and create that composition? And that composition doesn't always have to have a beautiful thing. It could be something that's not so beautiful, but it creates yet that conversation. We have a kind of a slogan that in the classroom where um, silence is a terrible thing and that we need to use our voices and this is the best way. About two years ago, I started working with Clay in uh, my high school art class. I kind of graduated into sculpture and uh, began working with it and really enjoying like human form. It's something that you know I kind of took off with once I finally got into the medium. Humanity is something that has like a uniqueness about it. Every single thing is different, nothing is the same. And at the same time, it's universally recognizable. Everyone can see either themselves in it or someone they know in it. I titled it a female disassociation and a young girl, she's about eight years old, has for the past year been dealing with body dysmorphia and anxiety and just like the overall social pressure towards her and it kind of shocked me considering her age, the fact that she is so conscious of what people think of her and that matters so much to her to the point where she just, it, it's hard for her to function. And I kind of wanted to speak out about that in a little bit, talking about how people, social media and society in general put down women in a, a way that's unnecessary and completely wrong and 
horrible. Through my piece, I was trying to convey that kind of message about how the world kind of breaks down women and objectifies them in ways that no person, no human should be treated. I've always loved clay. Just being in the class this year, I really got to experiment, and I really liked hand building the most. I hand built the whole thing. It was a slab that I cut out to make a cylinder, and then I cut out the bottom, and then I attached the faces last, and then I went through the whole glazing process after it was fired. This is the first piece I've sold, and it's also the first piece I've ever had in a gallery, which is super exciting. It's really about what I like, and so to know that someone else kind of shared that value in my work, it's, it was really cool. And then I was watching the live stream, and to see that I won third place was really cool too. I felt recognized in a way that I hadn't been before, especially for artwork. I hadn't really been involved in art before this year. This is a show that collectors who come to the gallery really look forward to every year. They are always blown away by the quality of work that's being produced, whether you're talking about photography, drawings, paintings, or ceramic sculpture, they're always impressed by the quality of work. There are oftentimes works that are available for purchase in conjunction with this show. Oftentimes the prices are more than affordable. It's an opportunity for people to begin an art collection or add an exciting piece to a collection that's already in progress. The community that we're in, the school system has a very diverse population, so it's easy for this exhibition to have great representation from all sectors of the community. And that's something that we're certainly proud of, something that the gallery is always striving to do, better represent the city that it's a part of, the state that it's a part of. We have 65 visual arts teachers in our 80 schools. Just to actually see some of the best of the best artwork that we have at our school, as well as schools that are private and parochial, it was just mind-blowing. We do have art in schools K through 12. Not every school has an art teacher, but we do have art in all areas. We also have a talented program, which identifies children who are exceptional in the visual arts, and it's a pull-out program for elementary, and they are taught separately and in small group settings and that is offered through high school at various gifted and talented sites where the children can go for instruction in their various specialties whether it be dance or music or visual arts. It's a melting pot of students with talent at all of the schools. We tend to see some schools more represented than others. You may see a few more students with exposure, not talent, with more exposure at some schools than others. But with them being involved into this showcase, it allows us to get more kids involved so they can showcase their work too. The value of art can go so many ways. It allows them to develop who they are as individuals. When you talk about social aspects of art, when you talk about just the interest as a whole of art, and the imagination that comes with that. And then you start thinking about the critical thinking that kids go through when they are actually composing or creating a piece. The arts is, to me, more important than any other area of education because it allows the child to use their minds in ways in which you can't in other core subjects that they take. There's nothing that a child can't do in arts that won't prepare them for any aspect of their life.